Welcome to the new AP Computer Science A series for Unit 4. If you want to jump ahead to a specific topic, check out the time markers in the video description. Also, I will be adding to and updating this series, so make sure to hit the subscribe button to keep up to date on all the latest content. We'll start by learning about for loops. For loops let us repeat a command or commands. Each for loop declares a variable that acts as a counter. The counter variable will monitor the progression of the loop, but can also be used inside the loop for various purposes. Let's start by declaring a for loop. The header of the for loop has three parts. The first part declares and initializes a variable that acts as a counter. The second part, the test expression, checks to see if the for loop will continue. Finally, the update for the variable will happen at the end of each cycle of the for loop. In this case, i will be incremented by 1. Let's add some code inside the body of the loop. In this case, we're going to print out the value of the counter variable i. Let's trace out this loop. We'll start by declaring int i and setting it equal to 0. Next, we check is i less than 4. It is, so we may continue with the loop. We print off the value of i, which is in this case 0. At the end of the loop, we increment i by 1 to become 1. Next, we check is i still less than 4. It is, so we may continue the loop. We again print off the value of i, in this case 1. At the bottom of the loop, we again increment the value i by 1, in this case to 2. We check is i still less than 4. It is, so we may continue with the loop. We print off the value of i, which is 2. We increment the value of i to 3. We check is i still less than 4. It is. We print off the value of i, which is 3. We increment the value of i by 1. It now becomes 4. We check is the value of i less than 4. It is no longer less than 4. This Boolean expression is false. So we terminate the loop and continue on to any code after the loop. Next, we'll talk about while loops and do while loops. While loops repeat commands while a Boolean expression remains true. Do while loops checks the Boolean expression at the end of the loop and will always run at least once. Let's look at a very simple while loop. This one, while true, will always evaluate to true, so the body of the loop will execute forever. Now let's look at a slightly more complex while loop. This one says while i is greater than 0. We see i is initialized to 4, so it will run, execute the code in the body, go back up to the top, evaluate to true again. Because the value i is never changed inside the body of the loop, this loop will also run forever. Now let's make a change. We add a command to decrement the value of i. As such, the loop will no longer run forever. Actually, we could have written a very similar loop using the for loop. Let's take a look at that. Here we have for, start off i equal to 4. We continue running as long as i is greater than 4. And at the end of each loop, we decrement the value of i by 1. Let's try tracing out this while loop. We start by declaring i and initializing it to 4. Next, we check is i greater than 0. A while loop doesn't necessarily run even one time. If this first evaluates to false, we will skip over the entire body of the while loop. Since this evaluates to true, we will continue on and execute the body of the while loop. System out print line i, which is currently equal to 4. Then we decrement the value of i by 1. Then we go back to the top, check is i still greater than 0. It is. Continue on into the body of the loop again. Output the value of i, which is 3. Decrement i by 1. Go back and check is i still greater than 0. It is. Output the value of i. Decrement the value of i. 
back up to the top to check if i is still greater than zero it is output the value of i decrement the value of i which is now zero go back up to the top see is i still greater than zero this boolean expression is now false so we will terminate the loop and continue on with any code afterward as i mentioned before we could have written this as a for loop Let's look at a piece of code where it makes a little more sense to use a while loop. Here we are having the user guess the value of a secret number, in this case 23, and they'll have to keep guessing until they get the right answer. We initialize user guess equal to zero, while user guess, the variable, is not equal to the secret number 23, this loop will continue executing. Inside the body of the loop it'll ask, guess what the number I'm thinking of, it will take user input and put the value into the user guess variable, go back up to the top and see if user guess is still not equal to 23. The loop will keep repeating until user guess is 23, then the loop will terminate and the code after it will execute that says you got it right. Another kind of loop that is not required for the AP Computer Science A exam but is still very useful is the do while loop. A do while loop checks the Boolean expression at the end of the loop. As such, a do while loop will always execute at least one time. Let's look at this example. We have int i equals negative two. It says do. So we'll execute system out print line i, decrement i by one. Then we check is i greater than zero. It is not, so we terminate the loop and continue onwards. Note that at the end of the while in a do while loop, we have a semicolon. Here, we're going to discuss how to write an algorithm that uses a for loop and the substring method in the string class to reverse the letters in a string. So let's start by creating the string that we're going to reverse. So I'm going to call it string original and I'm going to set it equal to the word pupils. And this could be set to anything we want. Next, I'm going to make an empty string that's going to hold the reversed characters. So we're going to say string reverse. And I'm going to set it equal to quote unquote. So this is a string of size zero. There's not even a space in there, but it is initialized. Next, what we have to do is we have to make a for loop. So the for loop is going to go through the original string backwards and then add each individual character onto the end of the reverse string. So we're going to say for int i, that's our counter variable, equals original, which is the name of the string we're reversing, dot length, open close parentheses. When we're taking the size of a string, we've got to use dot length, open close parentheses. And we got to say minus one. And the reason we're starting i as a, the length minus one is that internally strings are arrays. So that means they start out at index zero. So the length of the string is six. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. But the first character is at index zero, then one, two, three, four, five. So even though it's a size six, we're starting at index five. So that's the minus one. We're going to continue as long as i is greater than or equal to zero, because we want to go all the way back to index zero. And each time through the loop, we want to decrease the value of i by one. Now we'll put in the curly brackets to show where we start and end the body of the for loop. And each time we go through the for loop, we want to say reverse equals whatever reverse is so far. First time through a reverse will be empty then plus original dot substring, then we'll say i comma i plus one. So this is only going to get one character at a time. And that's because substring, when we have two arguments, this is the starting position, which is inclusive, and this is the ending position, which is exclusive. So we start at i, but we end one before i plus one. So substring is inclusive, exclusive. So this is only going to get us one character, the character at index i. So then it's going to go through, and it's first going to pull out s and add it on to reverse. Then it's going to pull out l and add it on to reverse. 
all the way up to the first character. So after the for loop is done, let's try it out and see if reverse is pupils reversed. So it's going to say system out print line, and we will say reverse. Now I'm not putting this in quotation marks because I don't want the word reverse. I want it to print out whatever is in the variable reverse. If I wanted to print out the word reverse, I would put quotation marks around it. Let's get rid of those quotation marks and let's run the program. And there we go. Pupils reversed is slip up. So that is one way we can reverse the value in a string. In this section, we're going to learn about nested loops. Some important facts. A nested loop is a loop that is declared inside another loop. It could be a for loop, a while loop, a do while loop. Doesn't matter as long as it's a loop inside a loop. Each time the outer loop runs once, the inner loop will go through a complete cycle. And a complete cycle can depend on the particulars of the inner loop. And we'll look at an example in a little bit. Nested loops can be useful when working with two-dimensional arrays. So let's take a look at some code. We have a class, we call it nested loop, and then we have a main method. So inside the main method, we have our outer loop. And the outer loop starts off i at 0 and will go as long as i is less than 2. So this one will go through two times. It'll go through while i is 0, while i is 1, and then when i hits 2, it terminates. Now here we have our inner loop. And our inner loop, we're using the counter j. We've got to have a different counter for the outer loop and the inner loop. J starts out at 0 and will continue as long as J is less than 3. So this inner loop will loop through three times when J is 0, J is 1, and then J is 2. Now, every time the outer loop goes through once, the inner loop will go through three times. So in total, 2 times 3, the inner loop will run six times. So let's trace this out and see what happens. We'll start by declaring I equal to 0. Place that on the stack. Next, we'll check, is i less than 2? It is, so we continue this outer loop. So the first line of code inside the outer loop is the declaration for the inner loop. So we declare j and set it equal to 0, place it on the stack. Next, we check, is j less than 3? It is, so we continue the inner loop. Then inside the body of the inner loop, we say system out print, and a pound sign and a space that goes to the output. Next, we get to the bottom of the inner loop, which means we increment, because j++ will increment j by 1. So now j moves up to 1. Then we check, is j less than 3? It is, so we keep going. Inside the body, we print off another pound in the space. Get to the end of the inner loop, we increment j by 1, j becomes 2. Then we check, is j less than 3? It is, so we keep going. We print off another pound in the space into the output. Get to the end of the inner loop, we increment j to 3. Next, we check, is j less than 3? It is not, so we terminate the inner loop, and that pops the j variable off the stack. So we get to the end of the outer for loop, which means we increment i by 1, so i becomes 1. Then we check, is i less than 2? It is. So we continue again through the body of the outer loop. So then we restart the inner loop. We set j back equal to 0. Then we check, is j less than 3? It is. So we continue the body of the inner loop. We print off pound in the space. Then we get to the end of the inner loop, so we increment j by 1, so j becomes 1. Then at the top of the loop, we again check, is j less than 3? It is, so we keep going. We execute the body of the inner loop. We print off another pound in a space. Get to the bottom of the inner loop, so we increment j by 1, j becomes 2. Then we check, is j still less than 3? It is, so we keep going. We print off another pound in the space, get to the bottom of the inner loop, increment j by 1, j becomes 3. We check, is j less than 3? That's false, 3 is not less than 3, so we terminate the inner loop.
we pop J off the stack, get to the end of the outer loop. So we increment I by one, I becomes two. We check, is I less than two? It is not. So then we terminate the outer loop and we finish our program. As mentioned before, while we did do a for loop inside a for loop here, we could have used any types of loops we wanted, a while loop, a do while loop. Often we'll have more complicated algorithms inside one of the loops. We might have an if else statement. So there's all sorts of neat algorithms we can write using nested for loops. And we'll learn about some of those in future videos. Thanks for watching. Please hit the like button and then leave me a comment down below. To see the next video, click on the image on the left side of the screen. To see the entire playlist for the series, click on the image on the right side of the screen. And to keep up to date on all the latest content, hit the subscribe button in the middle.